Hi, Neil from EA Media. Well, more and more people want to have encryption in their environments, use it for everything. It's a little overboard in my mind, but it's still something that people want to do. So you need to be thinking about how are you going to manage this encryption? So typically when you want to think encryption and management of encryption, you're thinking about a PKI solution. So what I thought I'd do with this video is talk about the de design components you want to be thinking about when you're putting together your PKI solution. First thing you have to understand is you don't necessarily need a PKI solution. Individual servers have the ability to generate their own certificates. This is called self-signed certificates. But the more servers you have, the more certificates you have in an in environment, the more you have to think about how you're going to manage them. Remember that um, with if a certificate expires and you're not aware of it, it can break an entire solution. So if you have a large environment with a lot of servers, using a lot of self-signed certificates is a good way to invite a solution to fail and you want to centrally manage those certificates. And that's where a PKI solution comes in. So it's all about the volume of certificates. Now, let's talk about the actual design side of things. Any, any architect worth their salt will tell you that there's three components that you need to think about. The first is the people aspect. Who are going to be involved in this? Who's going to use it when it's in operations? The second, are the processes around the solutions. What is the solution going to be interacting with? What are the processes that are needed for supporting the solution? The third is the technology that you're going to use. Most people jump right to the technology, so why don't we start with that? But don't forget that the people in the process can actually impact your decision on the technology itself. So the first thing you want to consider is the hierarchy of what, you're, what are called the certificate authorities. Now the certificate authorities are the authority over the keys in the certificates. They manage the components. And there's a hierarchy. The highest level CA, or certificate authority, and from now on I'll call it a CA, is what's called the root CA. It is the key, keys to the kingdom. If something was to happen to that root CA, that would mean anything happening to by anything that's lower in your CA hierarchy is going to be damaged. And you can't trust the certificates that are in the rest of your environment. So as a result, it is the most important component. Now, what's the most important what's the best way of securing a computer? It's to turn it off. So once you're, you've set up your root CA and it's generated its certificates for lower down in the uh, hierarchy of CAs, you take it offline, turn it off. That way you are assured that it will never be corrupted. Next level down in that CA hierarchy are going to be the intermediate CAs or the issuing CAs. Some people will call it a subordinate CA. These are the CAs that do the grunt work. Typically, you'll have one of these for every do domain that certificates are going to be generated in. Um, they are built off of, they are given the authority to generate certificates by that root CA. So the subordinate CAs, the issuing CAs, are um, trusted and trusting the root CAs. Okay, next thing you want to be thinking about is what's the operating system that you're going to be using your CAs with. Now, Microsoft has a CA, a Certificate Authority, um, option with their Windows servers. I would recommend going with that since most people use uh, Windows servers. You can go with other uh, um, capabilities like a Linux server or you can get a dedicated PKI solution from someplace, but the Windows server works just fine. So you can go with that. 
plus the documentation on how to set it up and is really good as well. Next thing you want to be thinking about is the CA database. So every time a CA generates a certificate or a key, you need to store it so it has a reference. Okay, so these keys, these certificates are your masters and you'll give a copy to whoever's requesting. And if you ever want to compare what's in your environment with what the original was, one is, you need to go to your CA database, which is where the master or that trusted copy is located. Often, if you are really concerned to make, about making sure those CAs are secure, those certificates and keys are secure, you'll store it in what's called an HSM, Highly Secure Module. Some people will even take that HSM and take it offline because it's just about as important as a root CA. So you want to think about how you're going to store your certificates and keys, your copy, not necessarily the ones that are being given out. Next thing you want to think about is what algorithms you're going to be using. Now that comes back down to your policies. What I usually recommend uh, organizations to do is not to create your own internal policy about uh, uh, algorithms to use. I usually send my customers to NIST and say just look at what their recommended algorithms are. Algorithms will change over time because computers become more powerful. They might, Right now the standard is 2048-bit uh, uh, um, uh, algorithms, based algorithms. But as computers get more powerful, it'll shift up. Maybe it'll be a 4K, who knows, at some point. Maybe it's an 8K, 16K. And I'm talking down the road, though. So you want to be thinking about what algorithms, what the what is approved for use inside your environment. Okay, last thing you really want to be thinking about from a technology point of view is the Active Directory instance that you are connecting to for authentication for getting into the PKI solution. Remember, there's a number of different roles that are going to be used interacting with your solution. You want to be thinking about that. Okay, so since we're talking about roles, let's talk about people. For me, there's a number of different roles that people need to think about. Oh, uh, before I move on to that, from the technology point of view, also think how you're going to do your backups, how you're going to do your recovery, how you're going to do your disaster recovery, because remember, if your CAs disappear, solutions that are in your disaster recovery environment also will not work. So you need to have that CA copy in your disaster recovery environment. And one last thing, um, you may want to think about automating the workflow. If you have a lot of requests for certificates, then set up some sort of workflow engine as opposed to doing it manually. Remember what I was talking about, how process can uh, uh, affect your decision on technologies? Well, if there's a lot of processes, if the processes are used all the time, you, you probably want a workflow engine. Okay, now let's talk about uh, uh, the people aspect. There are always a number of different people that are involved in any type of solution. The ones I typically will take a look at are the system owner, who's going to be owning the solution. Uh, the system admin, these are the people that um, manage the underlying operating system. The security analyst, typically this is the person that's actually handling the requests and generating the keys. You don't want the person managing the operating system to also be managing the generation of the keys. It's all about separation of duties. The requester, who's going to be uh, requesting? How are they going to be requesting? What do, what do they have to provide you information with? That sort of thing. The approver, because you don't necessarily want to be generating keys over and over and over again. People will quite often say, I need encryption. 
and ask for a key or a certificate. But maybe you guys decide that you don't need certificates or keys or encryption for that particular solution. Or maybe it's the other way around. Somebody's saying, no, I don't need, and you, you are saying, yes, you do. You need an approver. And the last rule that I always think about is the auditor. Because remember, with PKI, it's all about providing a level of assurance with regards to the encryption. So those are the base rules I normally think about. You might have others that you want to have involved. Think about them. And then create a RACI uh, that says who is responsible for what activity within the environment. Okay? And that ties back to the processes. Now let's finish off with the processes. Based on those roles that you just heard me talking about, there are a number of different processes that you need to be thinking about. There's the request process. How is it that the requester is going to request the uh, um, certificates? Approval process. Who is going to do the approvals? How does that workflow work? Um, creation. What's that creation process look like? Okay. Uh, there's the management of the PKI servers themselves. And then there's the governance aspect. And you notice all, the, all those processes are tied to the types of roles that I talked about earlier. So you want to think about all of that. Anyway, those are some points that you want to think about when you're designing your PKI solution. And I, I could get a lot more detailed, but um, then it all starts to depend on the solution itself that you're looking at putting into place. Anyway, take a look at that and hopefully you'll come up with a solution that works for you. That's it for this video. If you like this video, take a look at some of the other videos we have on our website. And if there is something that you want to me to put videos together on, please let me know. I'm Neil Rarep with EA Media, and I hope that helps.